Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Bobble Pod. We are into 2024, and it's great to be back. New year, a new way, new way of focusing. Uh, we've got some exciting ideas for Bobble Pod. Um, and I'm sad to say this will be the first of two episodes with that we will be launching in January before we take a bit of a break um, and come back in basically early spring. Um, so we're re-strategizing and launch some stuff. So for those regular listeners, we value you. We have been listening back to all the feedback and looking at all the data and we're taking that data and strategizing and coming back with something even better and bigger. So keep your eyes peeled. Hashtag Mr. Bobble will become a bigger hashtag uh, in the future. So today's episode um, is all going to be about retail 2023 the marketing roundup um by what i mean by that is retail in particular online and physical took a big hit in 2023 and i'll explain with the data and insights i have and what i mean by it took a hit um and there was big impacts in terms of just how retail has performed but the marketing impact as well on that and what does the 2024 outlook kind of look like uh we'll be deep diving into a lot of things but before our deep dive, as always, don't forget to like, follow, subscribe. If you're on YouTube, hello YouTube, I always wave to you guys. Um, don't forget to uh, click on the bell notification and subscribe button and you can get all our episodes that come out weekly. So the festive period is over. Everyone's back into the swing of things. Are you, Callum, you back into the swing of things? It, yes, it's it's um, been a bit of a slower restart than I'd like, but a nice restart in a way, just sort of getting back into things, sort of looking at, you know, what I've got planned ahead for the year and just having a, a, you know, taking it, taking it steady in 2024 is my sort of main aim is just to be a a nice chilled out year, really. Mine's awful throttle 2024. (laughs) It's pedal to the metal. Josh, I know you're not really on mic, but you back in the swing of things? I'm kind of the same as you. This year is uh, the year that I'm going for it. Let's uh, take over. You know, I've said that for the last six years and I'm still going for it every year on you. Um, it never really stops once you go for it. You never really t- The only time you take your foot off the gas is when you need to take a mental breather <laughs> and re- reflect on how well you've done. But talking about pedal to the metal in terms of retail everyone's been reviewing the 2023 retail performance as a whole and overall it was sluggish let's be realistic and transparent december or winter seasons did not help that confidence was low from consumers sales were low and the outlook for 24 is not looking that bright either and how, how do we know this because the British Retail Consortium um, report by KPMG UK Figures gave us, which was released actually January, so we're recording this on the 16th, we released a week ago, gave us our first actual glimpse into the retail spending over December and up to and after Christmas Day. So growth on a total basis for the previous year fell 1.7%. That's nominal terms down from 2.7% in the preceding month. So actually when people expected a lot more sales to happen in December last minute, it didn't happen because actually the growth year and year actually dropped. When we zoom out of that data a little, growth average that are respectable, 3.6% over the whole of 2023 through what we call, even with inflationary uh, pressures, nominal values. Um, Last month's sales performance was moreover less than stellar um for many retailers based on what they're expecting sales got off to a slow start uh, and that sudden surge you get you know just before christmas um that week preceding towards christmas it just wasn't enough to um you know support the sluggish performance throughout the year that people were expecting food sales on one hand in terms of retail were did fairly well growing 6.8 percent from the previous year um we're kind of expecting the sales growth would start to ease off from double digit highs, particularly as food inflation kind of lurches over everybody uh, with the cost of living crisis that's still going on. When we look at non food data, though, sales fell by 1.5% from the previous year, uh, up from 1.6%. So, a persistent kind of like theme were from last year, which was um, a reining in of what we call discretionary spending 
And I'm going to get into that a little bit more. Um, December was no different despite what we had in terms of festive feels. And, and a quote from Helen Dickinson's on the report said, the festive period failed to make amends for a challenging year of sluggish retail sales growth as weak consumer confidence continued to hold back spending. Now, I think there's an element to that that hasn't been analyzed in this report. I've read through the report. It's very detailed, very insightful. When looking ahead, again, Helen Dickinson, CEO, highlighted that 2024 looks to be another challenging year for retailers and their customers, and spending will continue to be constrained by high living costs. Now, that's just an overview of how it's kind of performed. It has been down. It hasn't been great. We've seen some of our clients that had ambitious targets. Some we hit, some we weren't able to hit. And the reality of it comes down to you have to deep dive into what are, what is the consumer mindset and behavior right now. And everyone's relearning spend, not just consumers, businesses as well. So retailers online and retailers in terms of actual um, physical uh, are, are bringing spend in. Ad spend wasn't as high as we expected. Some businesses took a risk and spent more, but didn't really see the value. Uh, One of our clients wanted us to encourage us to spend more and more and more, but the data wasn't showing that the ROI would increase or sustain at that level. If anything, the data showed that ROI would drop off a cliff. And when we did, and we did the test, guess what happened? The ROI fell off a cliff. So they were wasting a lot of expenditure. And and it, it's because everybody was competing for the same levels, a lot more automation into platforms like Google, but some great growth from social media with search terms, introducing new platforms, which is quite great. So retail, and we have retail clients, we have food retail clients in the sense of like Hampers, like Carrot Butler, we have non-food retail clients as well in terms of e-commerce where we're driving sales, tickets from, you know, product sales. It's It varies and there's different sectors. Some sectors are doing well, some sectors are struggling. As we know, food overall has done well, but non-food is taking a huge hit. And I'll get into why non-food has taken a hit because... There's so much more available in terms of the secondary market now than is the primary market. So, and and this is seen by where advertising spend has gone. So I've got, so now we've talked about retail. This is a marketing podcast, a digital marketing podcast. What about the retail ad spend? So ad spend increased each quarter last year with a 31% year-on-year growth in Q1, accelerating to 25% increase in Q2 and then a 17% increase in Q3 2023 and holiday marketing pushing ads investments even higher what was Q4 we don't even actually have the percentage yet 70% of all technology retail media went to brands like Amazon and Walmart so if you're buying tech products the tech retailer was basically Amazon Walmart globally um, that took 70% of most ad spend Um, 6% of home goods uh targeted guess what amazon and walmart sites 58 percent of food retail focused on i'll give you one more guess is it walmart amazon and walmart don't forget <gasps> amazon has its food element don't forget it, it made a 13 billion purchase of um is it whole food whole food who was it no morrison's in the uk but they spent 13 billion buying fresh foods was it i'm not sure whole foods fresh foods Someone comment if you're watching this. Um, but I remember the boy and I remember the share price increased into 15 billion. So they actually made 2 billion by buying the company out on share price value alone. Um, so a lot of platform, a lot of ad spend was going to platforms like Amazon, eBay, Gumtree, even wider brands like Vinted and Lo- like Lux Collector where people go. So people were spending a lot more, companies spending a lot more ads on platforms like that because that's where consumers were going. Why were consumers going there? Because the secondary marketplace primary being that people go direct to a website and buy like your um you know going direct to like john lewis or something like that as an example or direct to a website and buying something um let's say from curry's or something like that whatever it is uh, or apple um or going directly to a retailer like the physical store that's primary secondary is stuff like ebay gumtree vinted vinted huge growth vinted um 
everywhere. Lux Collective went on Dragon's Den, huge growth from that in terms of luxury second hand market. And it kind of shows you the impact that all sectors of income are having in terms of retail and where retail spend is going. It's quite interesting because why did retail not perform as well? Because retail brands are primary. They're the, the first part, the first sector, the primary sector in terms of the first party sector where you go directly to sites. Our e-commerce brands are all primary. So they expect people to go to the website and buy. But the sector that saw the biggest growth was the secondary market. Places like Vinted. Um, because they saw a significant increase in revenue, new users and sales tractions leading to higher ad spend in those platforms because of cost of living. Now, anyone says a cost of living is not a real thing. It is. The cost of living is still having it, having a big impact on consumers' behavior. And that sluggish performance from retail in 2023 led to Christmas being very, very sluggish and not really recouping on key industries and sectors. Why? Because it's cheaper to buy gifts at seasonal times through platforms like Vinted while also selling your own non-Christmas gifts that you needed from years ago or, or items or children's toys uh, and making money, especially families who do the, are the biggest bulk element of Christmas shoppers and buyers. I'll give an example. A friend of mine, I'm giving a shout out to him, um, Jag showed me how he bought these Disney princess dolls for his daughter on Vinted and he, and I was like, oh, you got them from Disney? He goes, no, I got them from Vinted when I went round. And there were 15 of all these different princess dolls. Now, individually, they're like 10, 12 pound each. So it'd be, to, if you went to Disney directly, it would have cost him at least 150 quid to buy the whole set plus VAT. So 180, well, yeah, 180 quid roundabout. So maybe 180, 200 quid. He got the whole thing for 40 pound on Vinted. And what do you think is going to happen in five, four, five years time when he, when his daughter doesn't need those dolls anymore? He's going to sell them back. If he makes 40 quid back, great. If not, if he makes 20 quid back, good, but he gets rid of it. So the secondary market is a lot more effective because a lot of my friends were telling me how they're doing just general household items and non-food stuff. They're going on platforms like Vinted or like if they want something a bit more designer but don't want to go to Louis Vuitton or go into John Lewis and buy something. They're going on brands like Lux Collective. And I was hearing about so many different platforms um, that people were exploring and using to trade and to buy. Facebook Marketplace is another one that people are going on just to buy items secondhand for gifts and toys because it was a lot cheaper. And... You know it's working and where's the evidence? Well, where's the evidence? Well, the evidence is what did the government do and announce recently on second marketplace websites? What happens? They're going to charge VAT on um, or tax 20% if you're selling more than £1,000. So you have to declare now under a certain law if you're selling over £1,000 worth of secondhand items, at which point you're liable to pay VAT or tax on those items. Um which I call because if I have bought this laptop directly from Microsoft at 1200 quid or whatever it is, and I pay VAT on top of that, and I want to sell it for 600 quid in a couple of years' time because I've got the new one and I don't want the old one and I don't just want to trade it in because I'm getting better value to start second hand, I have the right to pay that, sell that because I've already paid the VAT on it. What right does the government have to tell me to pay VAT again? or pay tax again on a product I've already paid tax on to own. I'm selling it at a discounted price because that's the lowest value it happens. It is. And, and the fact that they introduced this shows how much they're losing out on VAT for mainstream primary markets because so many people go into the secondary market. That is the only explanation. Unless someone wants to, you know, there's any financial advisor or anyone who works in here, Chelsea wants to give me another reason why they would do this. It's because it's hitting the government's pockets. Because people can realize and because smart brands like Vinted, Lux Collective and brands like eBay and websites like Gumtree and, and Marketplace allow people to trade at a cheaper rate in a cost of living crisis, created by said government, by the way, they're now saying, oh, well, we're not making as much money because the because because the confidence by consumers is low. That's where the retail market has been hit quite badly it's because confidence is low by consumers. They are going to other places and not willing to spend four or 500 pounds because their mortgage might go up by another couple of hundred quid next month. 
or their bills and energy bills might go up. So they're trying to keep as much cash and be more smarter in their spending. So when some of our clients didn't achieve the results they have, that is the explanation. And the evidence is there because the government introduced a, a new law where you, if, you're, if you're selling more than £1,000, you have to declare it because it's liable to a kind of like income uh, tax or VAT on products that should be charged. Because the government's missing out and the government's realizing, hang on, where is all this VAT money going? People aren't buying as much new. They're buying secondhand and we can't VAT secondhand. So we need to take some tax from it somehow or another. The evidence is there that it's happening and, and people move into a secondary market for non-food based traditional household items. And that's the evidence that we have a cost of living crisis to some degree as well, because people are being more savvy and Look at Vintage. Vintage is like almost like another Gumtree, eBay, where you can buy things, you know, secondhand elements. Even Amazon, you don't have to buy new, you can buy secondhand. But Lux Collective is a luxury version of what Vintage does. And they've had unprecedented growth. Some of that came from being on Dragon's Den. Some of their ads and what they're doing is smart. Um, but People aren't even buying high-end luxury items directly. People are using third-partner suppliers. I have a contact on WhatsApp who has a connection of people like me and pushes out key brand or items or gift items that are, you know, key high brands like Louis Vuitton or something like that, Gucci or, or fragrances. And it's much cheaper than going directly to, to the brand. I can buy trainers. I've bought Air Jordans through him because if I went directly and bought them online through a, a, an approved seller, not saying I'm buying something knockoff, but if I buy it through that, I'd be paying at least 50% more or 30, 40% more, including VAT on top of that for that item. Then this guy saying, I've got a pair of these in these sizes. I can say, well, how much for that one? And then I compare and I'm like, ooh, it's 200 quid cheaper. And I'm getting the exact same thing. And I'm not paying VAT on it. I'm paying that fixed price. It's It becomes a lot more sensible in the long term especially when you're trying to still enjoy yourself but spend but spend more sensibly if that makes sense so that's why the government's introduced it and that's to give you an idea and we know why retail ad spend was so high with amazon and and walmart site websites because that's where secondary marketplaces a lot comes from and that's where a lot of people are going to to be more savvy um 2024 is not going to get any better, unfortunately, but I do expect bigger retailers to spend more and innovate in 2024. One of the key trends, and we'll be talking about this in the next episode, which will be my digital marketing trends for 2024, I always launch at the end of January, will be how live shopping platforms like 20, like TikTok in 2024 will push more online retail. Um, big brands and other companies will invest heavily into their brand and better video content suited to key social media channels. That is what retailers will need to really focus on for 2024. Um, but it's like the old adage, if you continue to spend now to achieve more growth in the long term, so short-term spending for long-term gain, brand gain, or do you cut down in the short term and struggle in the long term to try to play catch up to those people that were able to take that risk? It's that old recession format. Um, retail is going to be sluggish for the next six months at the very least and throughout 2024. How long will that last for? We don't know. There are opportunities. There are uh, elements to do it, but it's how innovative and how creative can you get with your video content, the platforms, for example, search using tiktok as a search platform using social media for search more than actual platforms like google that have become a lot more automated so which become a frustrating for advertisers like us so the retail roundup is 2023 very sluggish um consumers um, behavior patterns changing moving from primary markets to secondary markets the government reacting to that by making us declare our income on secondary markets so they can start charging income tax on it, which kind of shows the impact it's having on their VAT. Um, and it's going to remain sluggish. Not food items are doing well still, but non-food items um, are taking a hit and a majority of actual marketing spend is going to platforms like Amazon. So you need to diversify your portfolio and where your ads or products are placed uh, and look at other ways to kind of like market them, use 
more live video content like live store shopping on platforms like TikTok, create more engaging and immersive interactive video content, innovate, look at what's worked, what hasn't worked, and you will find your way through. And we'll be providing more insights and more guest speakers from key retailers to give their insights on food and non-food throughout the year so you guys can get you know, more insights from key brands in terms of what they're doing, how they're pivoting, what their strategy is to help you along the way. Thank you for listening. Leave your thoughts and comments if you're watching on YouTube. Um, if you've seen any clips on um, social media, leave your thoughts and comments. We'd love to see them. Don't forget to use the hashtags, uh, hashtag Mr. Bubble, hashtag Ask Bubble or hashtag Bubble Pod. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe and look forward to catching you on my next episode where I talk about my digital marketing trends for 2024. Thank you.